My name is Cal Calamia. I'm going to try to not move from right here. Pronoun antecedent disagreement. Said my ninth grade English teacher, don't refer to your friend as they when your friend is a singular subject. And I echoed, pronoun antecedent disagreement, thinking I'm going to get a perfect score on this English ACT, thinking I'll correct your grammar, you can't correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I was wrong when I was 15. Call me they because I am plurality for the little girl screaming at the little boy, screaming at the woman, screaming at the man inside of me. They're all fighting to break free from the confines of this unrelated body. Get the fuck out. I am none of you. That's for the bartender denying me a beer as she asked for my real ID. Said she wasn't stupid. No corona for me if I show her a girl ID. And in front of my childhood friends, I said I am a girl. But I have no idea if I was lying. My words drenched in bile and embarrassment. No one knew to that same bar. My parents went, call me they because I am neither man nor woman. I am sibling, I am teacher, I am poet, I am friend, I am lover of many trying to be lover of myself. Don't need your fucking help to define my fucking self. That's for the janitor in the bathroom that stared me down as I was washing my hands. As if I am too stupid to understand where I am. I know where I am. Somewhere between here and there, somewhere trying to pee and avoid stairs, somewhere crossed between the hairs of your AK, shooting all my rights away. Are you a lady or a man? As I was washing my hands. Leave me the fuck alone. I know where I am. Call me they because I stand on the shoulders of warriors in this bloodbath for our right to exist, our right to shred an arbitrary list of pink versus blue, of me versus you, bullshit gendered characteristics, what good did they do? That's for my 14-year-old self begging for help, my 16-year-old self found out I was queer as hell, my 18-year-old self reluctant to take a dress off the shelf, my 20-year-old self stop shaving, oh well, my 22-year-old self the walls of these cages fell, call me they because it's not just me staring back. Well, you're staring at where our tits should be, like you're judging how to treat, st treat us based off whether or not they're there. Look at my face, stare at my eyes, read the story in my eyes. That's for the TSA agent who forgot to look at my eyes. These eyes are the same as they were when I was 16. But he stared at my license and said, this isn't you. And I thought, you know what? That's actually true. So I ran to the California DMV, got myself a real ID with my short hair and look there at my sex, see that X, call me they, thank you next, call me they, because it's me in the city. San Francisco says, you don't need to know what's in my pants upon shaking my hand. San Francisco says, I'm plenty, just the way I am. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm here again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cool. This next one is called Ink. You said it'd be a terrible idea to get a tattoo of your initials. I mean, I know, but after my initial agreement, I realized you're embedded in me deeper than ink and skin in the space between my organs. You swim and you never get tired. You permanent motherfucker. Thinking if my skin stays clean, then when you walk away, nothing will stay. No reminders of your name in front of my face. But my bones are your shoreline, my heart your fucking floating trampoline to keep this body from overflowing. My stomach will shrink. You take up so much space in here. And we were concerned about ink. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Y'all are very nice. Um, this one is about being a teacher and like a lot of my teacher friends are here. Y'all are the best. <clears throat> I walk into the classroom. It's a Friday. The kids are yelling, laughing, pointing at the board. Look what Eliana wrote on the board. I direct my eyes to the red scribbles on the board. No vale vivir esa vida on the board. That's this life is not worth living on the board. It's okay, Eliana giggles. No me corto no more. That's I don't cut myself no more. Shakes me down to the core. She rolls up her sleeves to expose arms unclean. My ears start to ring. I flash back to how it felt to make myself bleed. Heart pounding in my ears, what did I need? I want to wrap her up tight, push the hair from her face. I want to hear her heart beat, tell her I care. Just please stay. But the class is getting antsy. It's the end of the day. So through stifled tears, I hear myself say, let's bring it back, class. Bring it back, OK? And back my mind goes to when I was 12, had a razor blade that I kept on my shelf. Late at night, I begged God, take me out of this hell. And when my friend went with her, I thought I might as well. I disclosed too much in therapy. Bitch told my mom, who took my door off to protect me, but it didn't take a bedroom to wreck me. Snap back, right back, it's the ring of the bell. Goodbye, kiddos, till tomorrow. You all did so well. I tap Eliana's black hooded shoulder, resist all my urges to pull her in and hold her. I see me and her smile, the same evil in our self-destructive fingertips. 12-year-old me needed 22-year-old me. 12-year-old me would not have imagined 22-year-old me would be convincing 12-year-old someone else to live. But I'm here, here it is, Eliana, stay a while. I was 12 too. We made it all the way here and we will make it through. You have no idea the good you are and will do, so no more writing on the board. I'm right here, I'm with you. <laughs> uh.
thank you. Um, this one is called Barbershop Boy, and I just want to like shout out my dude Vince over there who was like, Barbershop Boy needs to be a t-shirt, and then I made it a t-shirt, so if you want, want to have those. Um, but yeah, think about this and think about the t-shirt, it's great. Barbershop Boy, I'm a barbershop boy, sitting in this chair in the barbershop boy. The boys around me don't know, or do they? Sit up straight, breathe deep, broaden these shoulders, speak deep, abandon my her, who's she? Said gender is performance, said all gender is performance, inhale this masculine air, myself a little manly, maybe halfway there, but where's my T, need facial hair? Like I haven't gone through puberty, like I can't understand masculinity through the eyes of these real men. Barbershop boy, am I a barbershop boy? What gives me a right to this barbershop boy? Is it my short hair, but no dick? Still haven't cut off these tits, hated tight clothes since I was a kid, urinals made me lean in, and I really don't know what spins faster. Is it the black chair or my mind? Men come and go like time. Their hair falls, so does mine. 45 bucks, man, he reaches for my hand. I don't know what they say about me when I go, but my fingers run through my flow. Fresh air on my neck, so what the fuck do I care? <laughs> Thinking barbershop boy, I'm a barbershop boy. Walk into my car from the barbershop boy. I have every right to be a barbershop boy. On that note of being really aggressive, uh, I'm gonna do another one like that. <laughs> Am I still in the frame? <laughs> Thank you. Monday, barbershop. I can't cut your hair with that hoodie on, man. Ah, shit, dude. I'm not wearing anything under. Uh, that's fine. Fuck. Am I a man? I need this man to think I'm a man. Run to my car as fast as I can. Large t-shirt and hunch and hunch. 10 minutes in, letting women in my shop would be a sin. Why do all barbers speak so poorly about women? Wednesday, bar bathroom. Come in, man. Pulls down his pants. Let me see yours. Ah, oh, shit, dude. I don't know. Come on. Fuck. Am I a man? I need this man to think I'm a man. Run out that stall as fast as I can, another drink, and hide, and hide. Ten minutes in, we lock eyes. Why do all men feel so entitled? I despise. Friday, bedroom, who are you? No reply, look in the mirror at my naked body. Fuck, am I a man? I need this man to think I'm a man, but I don't run, I face myself. Still I stand and stand. What does my body prove? What does a good man look like to you? Hi, sorry, I just need, some, just need some water. Uh, just to like say something funny. Um, I, I'm having top surgery on Wednesday. Thank you. Um, but I had a nightmare last night that my surgeon was like doing the surgery and like lost my nipple. Just like lost the nipple. So, I mean, I thought it'd be funnier. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Back. Okay. This one is called charades. When my uncle had his own kids, I was so fucking jealous of them. And how many more shoulder rides they'd get than me, how many more nights he'd put them to sleep. I remember back rubs under Barbie nightgowns. Me and my Barbie had matching nightgowns. Pretended I was knocked out. I've always loved sleeping on my belly. I remember charades. I didn't know how to play, but you went in the other room with me, calmed me down. Shh, it's okay. We whispered. I was nervous. But you said I had it. Walked out into the living room, whole family on the couch, was doing a great job till I opened my little mouth. Vroom, I'm a vacuum. <laughs> little tears like I let you down. You can't say what you are. You can't say what you are like you say you're in good spirits. Like they told you 10 to 15 months till the cancer eats your brain, I'm gonna say what I am again. I'm terrified. But you say I have it. You say go to your soccer game. I'm tired anyway, can only talk about this late when the kids aren't awake. Big tears like I let you down. I'm here in California now, you're in Illinois, where you know how to play charades. And in charades, you can never say what you are, which is far, which is far more concerned about the kids, about your wife, about how everyone else will feel when you die. When you had your own kids, I was so fucking jealous of them. But they need more shoulder rides and you need more time. They need more nights where you put them to sleep then crawl under the sheets with your wife. You need more life. I'm gonna say what I am again. I'm terrified, but you say I have it. And you can't say what you are, but I don't mind fucking up the game again. I am devastated. I am heartbroken. I am angry. You are love, cooking dinner in the kitchen. You say you love me. You say you are overwhelmed with love. We are fleeting. I don't know what I believe in, but it has to be something. We are fleeting until you are eternal, and I will meet you there. Uh, 
Oh no. <laughs> Should I leave it? Just for the second. E, okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> e. Okay, cool. This one is called Untitled Slash Empty Call Log because I like both names and I was like, it's cool to have an untitled poem, but also Empty Call Log is also a name it could be. <laughs> Silence doesn't count as acceptance, and acceptance is the bare minimum. You do know that, right? Never talking about me or to me to avoid doing it wrong doesn't count as love, and your love is supposed to be unconditional. You do know that, right? Keeping your opinions about my decisions to yourself doesn't count as support when you're not supposed to have opinions about who I am. You do know that, right? Look me in the fucking eyes when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Stared straight at a bookshelf for that one. I didn't want to feel like I was like screaming at anyone. Okay, last one, last one. I wrote this one for my friend like a couple months ago and they got top surgery and now I could like read it to myself. Cool. What kind of surgery? Top surgery, so like, like um, masculinizing chest surgery. Yeah, it's a good question, good question. <laughs> okay. They cut open your chest to take out your heart, put it under the light, said, wow, this is art. Look how it's grown so much over time. Look how it's stretched just like their mind. Said, put that thing back before a patient dies. Put that thing back. Jesus fucking Christ. They sewed you back up, said, it'll take time, but you'll heal. Said, look at you now. Just look at you now. You finally look how you feel. <laughs>